So right here behind me is my DIY fully all electric mini John boat to bass boat conversion. This thing right here is like my dream mini boat. I've always wanted to build something like this. I have finally done it. So today I'm gonna walk you guys around the boat, show you it inside and out, exactly how I built it. I'm gonna show you exactly how much it costs to build a boat like this. And then we're gonna take it out on the water and show you guys how it works. So to get started, let's talk about the motor on this boat. Now, like I said, guys, this is an all electric boat. And if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll know that I got this electric motor on Amazon. But the issue that I was having with the motor was it was 48 volts. So it literally would have took four car batteries essentially to power that thing or some really nice lithium ion batteries. So I ended up finding two 24 volt lithium ion batteries that I use to power this rig. And that leads me into today's sponsor. I need to give a huge thank you to Roy Pow. Roy Pow is the one who supplied the batteries for this build. Honestly, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have been able to make basically my dream mini boat. Roy Pow was nice enough to send me out two 24 volt, 100 amp hour lithium ion batteries. These 24 volt batteries are the real deal. They're lighter than your typical battery. This is a 24 volt and it weighs about the same as one of my normal 12 volts. Not only are they light, but they have a ton of features in them as well. These batteries have zero maintenance, no watering, no acid, no corrosions. They're fast charging, have self heating functions, Bluetooth, optional Wi-Fi, a five year warranty and up to 10 year battery life. I can even download an app on my phone and connect it with the battery so that I can check what the percentages are and how much battery life is left. So I'm gonna be using these batteries to power my electric boat, but when I'm not using this boat, I'm gonna take one battery and move it into the bass cat to use for my foot pedal trolling motor. For those of you who use a 24 volt foot pedal trolling motor on the front of your bass boat, this is gonna be a great option as well. It's lighter and it takes the place of two batteries, which means less chargers, less batteries, everybody's happy. So if you're looking for a good quality, smart lithium ion battery and 30% off, go ahead and hit the link in my description below. So I'll show you guys how I have that rigged up. I have these two 24 volts linked together. These batteries have easy screw down connectors. So you just use a screwdriver, boom, you're nice and tight on there. What's really cool about these batteries is you can literally turn them on and turn them off with their own power switch on the battery. So all I have to do is hold down the power button, wait till the little blue light comes on, and the battery is on. This is a really cool function because when you're not using the battery, you can just turn them off. So once I link the two 24 volts together, I then connect the motor. So once they're hooked up and the batteries are turned on, that is how I get my power for my boat. So the motor that I power this thing with is that $280 Amazon motor that I made a video about. A lot of you guys were requesting that I use this thing with real batteries. And since Roy Pau sent me those batteries, this thing kind of came to fruition and uh, it works pretty good. You guys will see here in a little bit how this thing actually works. I'm very impressed with this motor said and done for being just a random $280 motor that I bought on Amazon. Yeah, that's really it. It's just like a little short shaft outboard that's electric. If you guys want to see when I bought it, check out the video on my channel of when I bought this thing. But that is how I power the boat. So you guys had a ton of questions in the last video about all the materials that I use to build this boat. So let's talk about the deck first. The front and back deck were entirely used with the built-in bench seats that came with the boat and aluminum eighth inch angle and then rivets. That's literally all it is. I didn't do any aluminum welding. That was not my skill set. So I riveted everything. On top of the aluminum angle, I used PVC siding. A lot of you guys were asking about it. I used half inch siding. That's all I could find in my area. I don't know if they make thicker stuff, but I wanted this full boat to be waterproof. Wood not only adds a bunch of weight, but it doesn't last for forever. I know you can get marine grade plywood, but I'd rather just not have wood if that was an option. So I have half inch PVC siding. It came in a four by eight sheet. I got the whole boat done with one four by eight sheet. So in the back, you'll see that I have a box out frame with the aluminum I fastened into the transom on one side and the bench seat on the other. So it's a complete floating boxed out frame and it works really good. I just take my 
one piece of PVC in the rear, slide it onto the track that I essentially made, slides in, boom, we have a solid deck. Now I left the back one big compartment simply because it has batteries back there. There is no point in adding more structure just so I could have a door open and close. I think the trap door makes more sense and it makes it more functional. So if you guys take a look at it, it looks like it's decked all the way out because of the EVA foam, but this is actually just the bench seat. I went ahead and I made sure everything was flush and level so that it could disguise as a deck. And that right there saved me a hundred dollars. So we just made sure everything was level and that's how we got the entire rear deck. So going up to the front deck, very similar as far as the build goes. We started off with the bench seat. Once again, I just went directly into the bench seat, but this time I went on top. You'll see the framing right here. I went directly on top of the bench seats for this one just because of how long they were and the pitch of like the physical boat itself because it kind of went like this. So I ended up doing four pieces of angle. We did one over there, one next to it, two in the middle, and then another one here at the end. That's our full framing for the front deck that gave us five full compartments. This is the PVC. It's white. I haven't painted it yet. It's actually kind of dirty. I kind of have to finish this part. I've just been testing it. So I figured I'd get to that during the winter time when there's nothing else to do here. So these are our compartments. A lot of you guys were asking about dividers on the inside. You know, eventually I'm going to put dividers in there. I have one right now, but it's just kind of makeshift. It just sits in between the front and the back so that I have two giant compartments per se. I used just some cheap Amazon weatherproof latches for the edges that allow me to open and close these. The handles to open them, they were also just from Amazon. They were like four bucks a piece. The PVC is not as soft as you guys would think. I've had three people in this boat so far. I've had me, my girlfriend, and my buddy Tyler. To give you guys some context, my buddy Tyler is six foot four and roughly 220 pounds, and he was up here on it with me as well. And we didn't break anything. So, so far so good. It, it, the frame at least holds up. If you have a good frame, you don't gotta worry about sponginess in your deck and things like that. Mounting the trolling motor was a challenge in itself. I had to mount it on the boat because I needed more space in the deck. The problem with this John boat was the fact that it had coping on the edge. It was round, it was not square. So I had to fabricate a way to mount the trolling motor. I ended up using the angle as well for that. I built myself a custom frame that I riveted all together for this. It's basically angle back to back, creating like an iframe, teed on top, teed on the bottom. And then on the inside, we added supports. I think the only thing I need to do here differently is add a strap down support. So I might build another bracket right here so I could put Velcro around here because when I'm driving, that shakes a little bit. So a lot of thought went into that just because that was really the only possible way I could do it. Then on the front, I added a Lowrance fish finder that I connected to the trolling motor and screwed the foot pedal directly into the deck. I didn't want to drop the pedal into the deck because I'm left footed, it's awkward. For now, I just screwed it in. That's what I'm used to, that's what I like. And then to top everything off, I wrapped it. This was something that I never thought I would successfully do. I wanted to do it, but I didn't think it would look this good. So went on Amazon, bought wrap for cheap, got a little mini heater in my garage, slapped it on there and did a pretty good job. I was impressed with myself for that. So that's just about everything for the boat build. I think the one thing that I left out was the interior lights and the mini dashboard. I needed power to the boat. I wanted to be able to charge my phone, charge GoPros, have lights, and a working bilge pump. That was super important, which was another thing that I added. If you guys take a look over here, I literally took a Forrester bit, drilled a hole in the side of the boat, made sure I sealed it. So now we have a fully functional way to get water out of the boat if for some reason it ever started sinking. Maybe I forgot to put the plug in, something like that. So, so that's really it. It wasn't anything crazy and it's honestly not that hard to do. What's actually funny is I don't love electric stuff. I'm a big motor guy, but there's a lot of tournaments in my area that I wanna fish on small reservoirs that are all electric. So I needed a way 
to not only look cool in these tournaments, but you know, fish them productively, I guess I would say, because I was always carrying so many batteries to run trolling motors. It just wasn't logical. So now that you guys have seen the boat, heard about the boat, you're gonna wanna know how much did I pay for it. So let's break it down. So my overall budget to build this thing, I wanted to see if I could do it for $1,000. Taking consideration, I already had the electric motor, but I'm just talking the boat right now. We'll get to the rest of it. So the total price for this boat without the motor and batteries was a whopping $1,073. I think that's pretty good. I was only $73 over budget. So to break it down for you guys, I paid 500 for the boat itself. I paid uh, roughly $200 in aluminum angle. I bought the trolling motor for $75 on Facebook Marketplace. All the electrical components for the inside, like the wires and the dashboard were $25. The paint to paint the boat was $17. The red lights on the inside came in at $15. The foam for the whole boat was $30 a sheet, so $60 in total for that. Then the handles to get into the compartments were $28, and the hinges were $12. And then the last thing was the wrap. The material I bought in bulk, but the amount I used, I estimated it at about $50. Could be more, could be less, but I doubt it's more. So altogether, $1,073 to build the boat by itself. So if you guys just wanted a cool looking John boat and just ran it with a trolling motor to fish off of, you guys could do it for a little over a thousand bucks. But now, if you guys were to get the electric motor and the two batteries that were in there, it ups the price a little bit. Guys, lithium ion batteries are not cheap, but these Roypows are definitely more affordable than most of those batteries on the market, in my opinion. So with the motor and the batteries, the total cost would have been $3,500, $3,553 to be exact from what I totaled up. So $3,500 and you have a four horsepower all electric boat with a 45 pound Minn Kota in the front. Some of you guys are probably like, oh, that's a big jump in money. But when you think about what you have, literally a fully functional bass boat, it's not that bad in my opinion. I mean, if you're gonna go to the store and buy one you know, fully equipped like this, you're gonna pay like 10 grand. Maybe it would have a bigger gas motor on it, but it's a lot of money. So 3,500 for something like this, I think I'd be willing to pay it. I don't know, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But that is how much I paid for it, so now, Let's go take this thing for a rip. We're gonna pick things back up at the lake, testing this thing out. Well, we're still mic'd up, but we are backing this guy in the water down literally one of the sketches boat ramps. Hopefully we don't get my uh, truck nice and stuck. All right. Wow, the trailer's bottomed out. Uh-oh. Ah. All right, folks, well, we're gonna find out if we got stuck or not. That trailer's bottom out. I think we'll be fine, though. Dun, dun, dun. The boat looks phenomenal. I'm so proud of myself. This is literally the first time that I've fabricated a complete boat by myself to this caliber. So we have that Amazon all-electric motor, and a lot of you guys had a lot of questions about it, about how loud it was, about the proper battery setup. The battery setup that I have in here right now is probably the best that I can come up with. I'm floating away here, but this thing, it flies. Check it out. We, my mic might cut out, but this boat goes fast. I'm gonna come back and pick up Rachel just cause I get far away real quick, but this is the most legit all electric little tournament fishing boat setup I could possibly create for myself. Jeez, it, it throws you back. It's got some torque. For the Amazon motor, I'm really impressed. Now that it's got the proper battery set up, a lot of you guys were asking about how loud the motor was and unfortunately that's just how loud it is. I tried adding gear oil to it just like all you guys said in the comment section on the old video and uh, it did not make a difference in noise. But Rach, come on, let's get in the boat and uh, take you guys for a ride. 
All right, welcome aboard. I haven't named this boat yet, so let me know what you guys think I should name this thing. If you wanna just experience it POV, well, not really POV, but in the boat with me. It, it almost seems like it's got like a supercharger. It's crazy. Just drastic improvements. For a four horsepower motor, this is fast. It's, it's still pretty loud. I was wrong in the first video. You did have to add gear lube to it, um, but I did now and it, it, maybe it's too late, but it actually throws you back. Like if I hit it right away, like it throws you forward or backward. All right, so we're gonna do some fishing here for a little bit and I'm gonna take you guys through everything. We're gonna see if we can get the rest of the evening out of it. It's about four o'clock and uh, we're just gonna catch some fish and try the boat out. Okay, so we're out in the middle of the lake. I'm going to be dropping the trolling motor for the first time. Hopefully it didn't break on the car ride here. Perfect. Turn on the graph. Look at this, this is so crazy. I'm literally in a miniature bass boat. I know some of you guys are probably like, God, I'm not the first person to do this, but hey, I did it. I made it myself and that just makes me happy. So if you guys are curious about stability, I can do a little jerk on the front of the boat if I don't break the rods. Stability's there. This is a 1236 John boat. So it's essentially 12 foot long and about, I think at the, at the widest point, almost 48 inches wide. Trolling motors on there, really solid, especially for my custom bracket that I made. The PVC with the EVA foam just is the nicest thing on your feet. And I have a bad back, so when I stand all day out on the boat, like it sucks. So it's really forgiving. If you guys are like my size, I, I know I'm not a big guy, so it's you know a lot easier for me to do stuff like this, but I would definitely recommend doing the uh, PVC over three quarter inch plywood like everybody does for the most part, so. So far, so good, but we'll keep you guys updated. Well, my GoPro's frozen, but uh, I got a fish. Look at this. Thanks, GoPro, for not working. We officially broke in the electric mini bass boat. All right, so we're back from testing the boat out. Everything works exactly how I want it to. I'm absolutely obsessed with this boat build. I couldn't be any happier, especially with this whole thing being DIY. One thing that I left out that I know you guys are gonna ask in the comments section is, how did I fasten the deck to the boat? I realize I didn't talk about that. Or the sea deck, really. The sea deck, guys, it's just cheap sea deck. It sticks really well, so far so good. Only time will tell how long that's going to last. But as far as fastening down the PVC, I just used deck screws. I drilled little pilot holes in the aluminum, got one inch deck screws, screwed it right in, threw the C-deck on top of it. That's just how I did it. It was kind of an easy way out, but it works perfectly fine. Plus, if I need to take it off, I just take the screw out. Another question that I saw in the last video was, is the PVC heavy? No, it's not. It didn't add a ton of weight to it. I mean, don't get me wrong. It does add some weight to it, but not nearly as much as a typical three quarter inch piece of marine plywood. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this inspires you to maybe get out and try and build something yourself. I was able to do this by myself with the help of my girlfriend here and there. It's companies like this that allow me to make videos to bring to you guys. So if you guys want more info on those batteries or a discount, hit that link in my description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.